Greetings and salutations, this is Sudaku with State of Machinations, and welcome back to Assassin's Creed Unity. Now, I would like to point out that, once again, this is one of those episodes where we had the messed up audio, but next episode will be back to normal, so it will be past me, not future me. Uh, anyhow, um, so, we start off with, uh, with this objective to infiltrate this little area right here. Now, <laughs> of course, my first thought was, stick to the rooftops, I should air assassinate that guy. And, well, he pretty much immediately walked into that terrace, I got there, he moved up, and became just far enough that he could see me, but I couldn't assassinate him. So, in the end, it's really better just to ignore that guy. Um, frequent use of eagle vision on this mission is pretty much <laughs> pretty much required. Um, now, you if you run along the rooftops, come up here and start making your way along there, along that rope, you can eventually get over to a more optimal location. Now, I saw that the guys were down here. Uh, I was trying to drop down there, but I got immediately spotted by that dude. Now, you, you'll pretty much just want to hang here until uh, that dude, who um, should be Eagle Vision right about now, that guy right there, wait until he turns around and drop down into the crowd, and you'll pretty much immediately initiate the cutscene right here. So... Again, no audio for this cutscene, but we get to meet a certain Latouche, who uh, is cutting off that guy's leg right now. And we also meet this guy. Now, normally I wouldn't say his name before he's revealed it in uh, regular context, but that's the Marquis de Sade. Uh... Well, if, if you're curious as to who that is, if you've ever wondered where the name sadism come for, comes from, uh, it comes from Marquis de Sade. He was pretty notorious for his very violent sexual practices and his support of the libertines. Um, he's a fascinating individual, but also certifiably psychotic. Uh, he's, he's absolutely off his rocker. Um, but I mean, uh, that could be said for a lot of people that end up in a lot of games and indeed a lot of people throughout history. So yeah. Um, yeah, this, this guy, he, he wants us to kill. Oh, uh, it was, it's not Latouche, but the guy he was with, I don't recall his name at the moment, and I can't really make out the subtitles very well on the screen I'm reading this on. Anyway, <laughs> fourth wall breaking! Um, he wants us to kill our next assassination target to pretty much get him out of the way so that he can take over, but we're not going to do that quite yet. We've got to, uh, we got to go find someone for him first. We've got to go find a certain man who was just sawing off a certain other man's leg. Yeah. Well, as you can see, when you eagle vision, you can follow the trail of blood from when they drag the dude away. Uh, you'll you'll want to go down that hallway pretty quickly, by the way, because there's a guard looking right at that door. Um... But as soon as you get up to here, you can take cover on that wall, and you'll be given the task of tailing Latouche. Well, um, it's pretty easy just to make your way into the crowd. Guards don't spot you immediately, so uh, make your way into the crowd and go through the left-hand door right there. Um, as, as reckless as I am, I wasn't about to try to mess with guards while I'm tailing somebody. But... Make your way in, and down the end of that first hallway is our first guard we have to worry about. Now, you can probably ignore him, but I took him out with a quick shot, just for measure. 
Um, continue onward, and you you won't want to go up as far, quite as far as I did, because he turns around periodically, and he started to notice me. I got caught on the beam, and I almost failed the objective, because he would have noticed me. But if you take cover on this wall, you'll be fine. Um, so you can take out again with a quick shot. Um, and it, it just, it's all pretty self-explanatory, really. Uh, they, they give you a pretty easily detectable path. It's just that some of the, sometimes it tries to throw you a curveball, like right here, um, He's talking to that guy, and he almost he he comes straight in there. He would have noticed me, so you're gonna want to hop into that thing. He circles the area, I believe. So if you hop out, just keep try to keep an eye on him. Try to keep following Latouche. All right, and this this next thing that we come up to here, almost threw me for a loop because I he turned around and I thought he was about to detect me again and at, at that range he would it would have been immediate I just I would have just failed the mission um but you actually don't have to go out that way you're gonna want to be right where I'm at right now so keep moving again ignore the guards there's no reason to there's no reason to fight him or try to kill him. Oh god, never thought that would come out of my mouth. Not killing somebody? What is wrong with me? Anyway, if you keep progressing, you'll eventually come to this area. You'll get this cutscene. Now, <laughs> he he's a paranoid little fucker, but I'm I'm pretty sure he knows we're coming. Color me paranoid, but uh, I think he's paranoid. So anyways, he locks up the front gates, gets rid of that guy's dead body. Oh, right, yeah, he dies. He dies on the way there. <laughs> anyway, um, I actually, I got pretty far in this my first attempt. Um, I decided I was going to distract those guards with a firecracker bomb. And I was going to be all like, yeah, I'm a ninja. I'm going to sneak up on you. You're going to die. Look at you. Stop looking in that direction, you idiot. And from there, it's pretty easy to just make your way into the first floor of the house. Um, and just move in. Go, go straight up. And uh, this this part, it, it could get you in a little bit of trouble if you're not, if you're not careful of what you're doing. Because there's a guard back there who approaches from behind you. So just wait until... He's kind of facing away from you. Make your way up. Don't run at him. Just crouch. Do the little fast move crouch thing. And you should be good. That guy also almost detected me. Wouldn't have been good. Anyway. <laughs> uh, so this is the part where I get greedy. Because I should have just went straight upstairs and killed Latouche. But I decided, hey, I'm going to take out this fucking guy right here. So... Yeah, and from here, I'm like, all right, well, I'll try to get in from the second floor. That seems like the best option, because he's on the second floor. Um, and I noticed that sniper. Now, if you know my personal history with snipers in this game, you know that I fucking despise them. But what I didn't take into account was the fact that there's also another one behind me right now. So... While I did manage to very quickly and easily dispose of that guy, the sniper behind me caused me to freak out. And I'm like, oh, I better get the fuck away. Well, there's uh, this little hole into this building right here. I figure, hey, he can't see me in there. Huh, yeah. Um, so I drop down, and there's a bunch of guys in this room. I will save you the pain of having to figure out exactly what happens to me. I'll give you a hint. Yeah. Anyways, uh, immediately after I respawned, I f found this. I don't know exactly what the f 
fuck was wrong with this guy, but he was looking right at me and not detecting me. I, even when I'm not in the red circle, he's supposed to be suspicious of me. So he just kind of sits there for a minute, but of course, as soon as I move r right here, he immediately goes into alert mode. Thankfully, I was already climbing the building, and he loses me pretty quickly. But, alright, so I took a different route this time, and I decided, hey, let's let's go second floor route. It'll give me a chance to kill this guy without having to try to climb up to him. Um... And, well, I was right. There's a fucking open window right there with a guard who's very easily killed. Uh, and there also just so happens to be an artifact up here that I would have missed if I hadn't... If I had gone the first floor to the second floor instead of third floor down to the second floor route. But, anywho, just head down the stairs. Um, you can use your ego vision for good measure, but there's nobody on the second floor except for him. Uh, so, just make your way up to that door, um, of course you can see me being very cautious right now, and uh, as soon as you interact with the metal door, it triggers the cutscene. Meet Cleaver, because he thought that was going to work. And again, he reaches for a bottle, something else to try to hit me with. But that didn't work out so well for him. So, we lock him up, interrogate him. He's about to give us the location of our next target. So, yeah. Read the subtitles if you want to. But, uh, we're just gonna leave his ass there. Cause, why would we even bother? But, uh, escaping this area, not too hard. Just go back up the way you came, come out the second floor, and take the exact route that you used to get up here, back. Come along this way, you'll avoid all the guards on the rooftops, and you'll be you'll be home free. Now, we made our way straight from here to the second, well, not second, but to the to the next mission. And this one is a doozy. Uh, this one took up the entire rest of the time, um, uh, partly because of a couple mess ups on my part, but also partly because of some other more annoying factors. Also, because, you know, balls to the wall, man. Now, you got two optionals you can do here, in addition to a third, just like the, a traditional optional objective. Um, you, got, you can help that guy we just saw, and you can close up those vents. Uh, helping the guy you saw uh, will... Again, cause a distraction for you, while closing up those vents makes it harder to see you in the sewers. Now, we're going to assassinate that French-ass name. <clears throat> so, uh, first thing we did, you're going to want to jump down and air assassinate that guy. Now, do not try to sabotage that immediately. Why? Because those assholes... Let me let me eagle vision in a second. Yeah, those assholes notice the body and come over to investigate. And it takes long enough to close those things that if you don't, if you don't wait until they leave like that, then they will detect you while you're doing it. Now it took them longer to see the body this time than it did last time, so I suspect that they might be on a guard pattern or. Uh, uh, like not necessarily a walking pattern but a vision pattern uh, but the first time I tried to do that they noticed me and uh, pretty much murdered me immediately but yeah anyway um, you can go kill this guy other guys don't notice and you can just blend with this crowd that apparently wasn't paying attention to me stab that guy yeah so you can try to be sneaky here, but sometimes that shit just doesn't work out. So, yeah, you can, if, if they detect you, just bring them back here, uh, or kill them back there. I brought them over here because I was going to do the distraction guy fight with them at the same time, but I really wasn't thinking because they started a fight with him, 
And yeah, I mean, I I managed to kill all of them, but uh, yeah. If if you notice, I'm not exactly prioritizing defending that guy right now. And how much you guys want to bet that that's going to come back and bite me on the ass? By the way, glitchy ass finishing moves are glitchy. But anyhow, yeah, uh, your ally is being attacked. Your ally is at low health. My ally just got assassinated, and it didn't actually uh, notify me <laughs> until later. But yeah, you can loot the bodies, if you want. I'm going to skip the looting from now on, though. So, if, uh, again, if you got detected, don't forget to run back here and sabotage this, because it is essential. And I'm so, so glad that I sabotaged those later in the mission. But, yeah, when, once you're done, just make your way back over here take the elevators up to the rooftops because you do want to be on the rooftops now <laughs> the optional objective is air assassinations now you can do it the smart way and get them slowly as you're doing the mission or you can do it my way and assassinate this fucker right here and uh, kill every single motherfucker in the room did I mention that I'm greedy for optional objectives? Also, that this game is brutal as fuck? That person's gonna walk out there to their blood-splattered door. Anyway, go to the south side of the church, and you can air... You can air... Air dive? Yeah, why did I just say that? You can, uh, leap of faith into the hay bale. Now, I'm thinking, huh, how can I most tactically kill, tactically kill those motherfuckers? And I realized I could just run out, stab one of them, and then slash the other one in the face in open combat. Most stealthy. So, yeah. Uh, opened my thing for no reason. Not sure why I left that in there. Anyway, um, maybe just a brief second. But you're going to want to uh, you're gonna wanna be careful about these guys because they are on a walk pattern. Um, uh, you just wait until guy goes over there, take them both out easily. He might, in fact, he probably will notice you, but you can stab him before he actually alerts. So, yeah, um, I didn't bother with that chest because of course it's too high leveled, but Hey, it's there. If you've already got the thing when you're redoing the mission. Uh, so yeah, interact with the plank of wood, drop down. Uh, and from here on it is incredibly linear now it it might seem very confusing and maze like in these sewers but so many of them are closed off that it's basically a straight shot if that guy notices you as you approach him by the way do exactly what i'm doing right here and hide behind that wall because he is stupid as hell and will approach the area allowing you to do this to him yeah next room and <laughs> Uh, or not. I forgot that I didn't cut that out. Now we're in the next room. Anyway, um, those guys, uh, stab the first one, of course, and you can do what I like to call the mark and execute. Yeah. Ideally, that would be a stealth kill. <laughs> next room. You can... <laughs> All right. Uh, as you, as you keep moving through the halls, you will come to this room. Now, this room... It's a bit of an asshole, because uh, that guy likes to notice you as you walk in the door. But he, <laughs> uh, and at first I thought it was the guy that was behind the boxes, but it was actually the one on the far side of the room. Anyhow, uh, just keep your wits about you. It's actually not too hard of a room. There are only two guards, but the game likes to, well, at least it did for me for here, like to do some weird things. Now, he might look like he could be from here, but he doesn't like to stay in there. So you got to go there, and that guy will probably notice you. He he's he, We keep playing peekaboo with him here, and I realized as I was doing this that I could have went up 
top and dropped down on him and then assassinated the other guy, but hindsight is a bitch, isn't it? So I'm sitting here. I'm like, okay, I'll try to sneak up on him. Nope. He notices me. All right. I will throw this cherry bomb right at the ground and it will burn my testicles. And he's like, oh my God, what is that? I better go check out this dead body. So, of course, tired of fucking around with this guy, I just walked up and stabbed him, which I probably could have done straight from the outset. But yeah, just drop down on that dude in the next room. It's right there. Now, I didn't realize that there was a dude right fucking there, but I'm about to. And quick shot, because I don't feel like fucking with him. Next room. Okay, so this dude. I was going to try to be stealthy, and in fact, you probably should try to be stealthy, but I took an arrow to the sense, so I just decided, hey, let's kill every single person in this room in open combat, because I'm an asshole. Also, your face, goddammit. But yeah, just climb this beam. This actually confounded me for a minute. I didn't I didn't think I could climb the beam. But uh yeah, just climb the beam. You'll get up here. Another cutscene. This time it's between Latouche and your target who uh I don't know how in the hell he managed to get out of his chains. I guess somebody found him eventually. Uh maybe the incessant yelling of Help! Help me probably uh probably did something for his cause. Now this is uh, the, the King of Rats, I believe they call this guy. But he is part of the Court of Miracles, I think. I might be wrong about that. Anyway, um, I, I believe it was a historical dude, but honestly, I can't be fucked off to try to figure out who that is. Uh, or if it was a real guy. So, once you're done with that cutscene, you can just move on. Down the hallway. Over the hills. And into the woods. To fuck off down this hallway I go. Yeah, those those guys over there aren't even worth messing with. So, ignore them. And continue on. Now. I'm like, how can I do this? Of course. The solution, it was obvious to me all along. Mark and execute strategy. And now, theoretically, you would shoot him, jump down on the one on the left, assassinate the one in the middle. What actually happened was, shoot him, jump down on this guy, he notices, and stab him in the face in open combat and slit his fucking throat. Yeah. Moving on. Uh, so... Of course, Latouche is like, hey, I'm a Ladouche. And I'm like, oh, I'm La Stupid. I can't just run in here. I have to try to walk up to you. Yeah. Anyways, go up the ladder. You don't have to climb the grate, by the way. Past me. You don't have to climb the grate, you stupid asshole. So you can just run straight into this room, by the way. No consequences. Other than the ambush. I'll give you three seconds to guess how that f ended up. Yeah, being sniped by uh, the King of Rats, who is on the second floor, and you can't climb up there from down there. So, yeah, don't go in there. I know that the objective is in there. Don't go in there. Walk over here. Assassinate this guy. Okay? Loot his corpse if you want to. Okay, go back around to where you came in before. And it's exactly the same. There's a, another image here. Now, don't freak out if somebody on the top notices you. Just stay stealthy, my friends. Stay frosty. Stay cool. You don't have to mess with those guys. Uh, you can, because they're they're in the way of your eventual escape. But you don't have to. And in fact, I don't. So, from here it's pretty straightforward. 
It's basically a Prince of Persia level. Jump up there. Drop kill. Kingy over there will probably notice you. So if he does, don't freak out because you can just run up on him. Tackle him. Now it won't let you air assassinate him uh, if he's noticed you, but just fight him in open combat. Nobody else seems to notice. Do not forget to assassinate him while he's on the ground. So yeah, you'll be you'll be treated to this little memory cutscene. I miss my conversations with my dead targets. This memory thing is really contrived and stupid. Uh, there's really no reason why Arno should have the ability to do this, unless they're going to explain it away as like some ancient precursor power that he has that was passed through his bloodline and only just now awakened. But Anyway, uh, yeah, as you can see, he is the one who delivers the killing blow to De La Serre, uh, way back in the intro to the game. And we get our first glimpse of the Grand Master. Not his actual face, of course, because they're trying to keep a secret that they've already divulged in the helix things that the they think that Arno may have uh may have met a sage well yeah anyway so yeah you can do this lockpick thing it's it, it, lockpicking in this game is actually pretty difficult but if you just keep your wits about you you can get out this door you probably could have used this to get up, too, by the way. Um, anyhow, you'll notice that uh, your ambush party has moved into that room and is now currently looking for you because they raised the alarm. So make your way back. Um, uh, you, you could probably drop down there and air assassinate at least one of those dudes. But there is more than one of them in that room if you didn't take out uh if you didn't take out all of the search party anyway. There will be more than one of them in that room. So just calmly. Now initially I thought, oh, escape, I'll just go back the way I came. But then I realized that there was a green arrow telling me to go somewhere else. Yeah. So I get all the way back here. For nothing. That's right. I'm an idiot. Surprise, surprise. Take cover. Uh, assassinate this dude if you really want to get caught. Uh, but, you know, it doesn't really matter because you can just kill this dumbass. He, he goes down in one hit if you've saved up enough money for the falchion. Or two hits. I don't remember. Eh. I have a bad memory. But yeah, as you run out, you'll be forced to try to escape. This is where the fog comes in handy. Now, <laughs> don't be deceived. You don't climb up. I don't know exactly what the fuck I was doing, but is as long as you, yeah, as long as you've got the fog up, it's actually pretty easy to get away from anybody. In fact, you can get away with shit like this while there is a dude. Right to my left. Yeah, he, he was watching that direction the entire time and did not notice me. So, the steam actually makes this mission relatively easy, which is good. Because after some of the shit that we just went through in this mission, yeah. But as, as you're making your way out, you block your exit. So... <clears throat> With that done, the King of Rats has been exterminated. You like how how professional that sounded? Yeah, how I made that sound like I was actually, you know, doing something? Anyhow. Yeah. So, the only thing left is to exit the sewers and talk to Desaad, who, surprise, surprise, Runs a whorehouse. Yeah. 
Uh, Desaad was not particularly pick picky about his sexual partners, if history is any indication. And he was an open advocate of uh, debauchery. Yeah. He... He's a very interesting individual. I, I would really recommend that any of you that are interested in this time period do do a little bit of looking into Marquis de Sade, because he is a freak. Um, but yeah, it's of course as it's, it's he's saying here, he's building a kingdom of whores or some some such lunacy like that. He's absolutely effeminate individual <laughs> but at the same time he's very not um yeah i i mean even at the point that i'm at while recording this uh actually i haven't finished unity yet because i just started recording episodes again um i i don't think i've seen the marquis de sade at all again uh and I'm up to sequence eight. So, yeah, uh, he's, I, I'm not sure if he's actually going to become a key figure again in the story, but yeah, it's surprise, surprise. He has one of those. Anyhow. He is going to reveal the location of, or I, no, he, I believe he, he's telling us about the silversmith, if I'm not mistaken, but, eh, spoilers, love, I can't mention nothing about the silversmith yet. Uh, the thing that does creep me out about this scene, though, is the, the dead look on that girl's face. It's, that, that does not look very consensual. Like, I, I, I really, really just kind of wanted to stab him in the back. Because she does not look very comfortable with being there right now. Yeah. Anyhow. With that absolute creepery done with. Uh, we're also going to be done with this episode. So, as usual, I thank you all for tuning in, and I hope you've had a you've had a good one, and I hope that you have a good one. Rather, thank you all for watching. Bye bye now. Okay then.